What we're going to be talking about today is the difference between average and instantaneous velocity. So let's have a look at this example. We have a driver over here on the left and they're going to be reacting to a hazard. So um, as they're driving along, they see a fallen tree, they press onto the brake pedal and they come to a halt just below the tree so or just before the tree so should we just call that let's say that this over here is point a and this one here is point b now their average velocity is going to be defined as follows so their average velocity will be the total displacement total displacement divided by the total time. Divided by the total time. So the average velocity will be the total displacement divided by the total time. This is a pretty useful metric to have, however it doesn't convey enough information when the velocity is varying. So in this instance you can see that the velocity will be decreasing at a given rate from A to B and the rate of decrease could even vary in itself. So if I had a point here, knowing the average velocity I don't know what the velocity at that point is. The middle point here, I still don't know what the velocity is. All I know is that the average velocity from A to B will be a certain amount. Now, how can we know what the velocity at, say, point C is? Let's have a look at what instantaneous velocity is. Now, if the average velocity is defined as the displacement between A and B divided by the total time interval, we can also define the instantaneous speed. So let's just call that V instantaneous. And this is going to equal some very small displacement. Let's say, I'm just going to call that D. It will normally be a displacement from, let's say, point C to just somewhere really, really close, some very, very small distance over an incredibly small amount of time. So um, this delta T here will be very, very small. Let's just differentiate it from, um, from the one above. So I'm going to call it, uh, let's say, delta T prime in this case, where delta T prime is very small. For those of you guys who are studying calculus, you will know that the instantaneous piece will be the derivative of the displacement with respect to time. Now we can find the instantaneous velocity at point C using a graph. Over here on the right, we have a displacement time graph. On the y-axis, we have the displacement from point A, which is the car. And you can see that it's decreasing at a non-linear rate up until it reaches uh, close to zero when the car reaches the hazard. Now, we can use this graph to determine the instantaneous velocity at point C. What we need to do is find the gradient of the tangent line. So the first thing we need to do is draw a tangent line. So at point C, which was about midway between uh, the two points, which uh, let's say will be about here, what we're going to do is simply draw a tangent curve. So I'm going to use a ruler. Obviously, it goes without saying, we always need to use a ruler to draw the tangent line. So I'm going to use my digital ruler to be quite precise. Let's see if I can align it just there. Okay, and I'm going to draw my tangent line like so. Now, the rule is that the instantaneous velocity at C, so I'm just going to call that V subscript C 
will be the gradient of the tangent line will be the gradient of the tangent line at point C. In other words, the um, velocity C will be, uh, however, the change in my y-axis is divided by whatever the change in the x-axis is, where delta y and delta x are these quantities. So this over here will be my delta y, and the distance from here to here will be my delta x. It's important to note that we need to keep our gradient triangles as large as possible when we are solving past paper questions and in general when we're doing science. Okay guys, let's have a look at a quick past paper question. Okay guys, so let's have a look at our first past paper question on this topic, which is a multiple choice question. The graph below shows the variation of the displacement s with time t for an object. At which point a, b, c or d does the object have maximum velocity? Now remember maximum velocity is all about the steepness of the gradient of the tangent. So if you just take your ruler and you see where the gradient of the graph is steepest, you're going to see that B by far has the steepest gradient compared to any of the other points. Another way is if you imagine yourself riding a bicycle upwards, you're definitely going to be struggling at most at point B. So the correct answer is B. Okay, let's do a written question example as well. So figure two shows a variation with time t of the displacement x of a woman from point A to B and back to A. State what the gradient of the graph represents and explain why the graph shows both negative and positive gradients. So if you imagine drawing the tangent at either of those points, you can see that over here on the left, the tangent um, is going to have a positive gradient and over here on the right the tangent is going to have a negative gradient going downwards. So as we know the gradient of the tangent here represents the um, instantaneous velocity. In other words when the gradient is positive the velocity is also positive so let's say that this over here is point A and this over here is point B. If we're going this way initially, let's say that this over here is the positive velocity, we reach B and then we turn back around with a negative velocity the other way. So just to summarize, the gradient represents the instantaneous velocity. So it'll be the first mark, and then the negative and positive gradients show a change in the direction of movement. Okay guys, let's do one final past paper question. This one here is from January 2010, the G481 exam from OCR Physics A. So uh, we have a graph of displacement S against time T for a spring. The question is, explain how you can use the above figure to determine the maximum speed of the mass. You're not actually expected to do the calculations. Now the maximum speed is going to occur at the steepest portions of the graph. So it's going to be here, here, and here. Uh, this is going to actually be at 1 second, so 1.0. 3.0 seconds and 5.0 seconds. So the way we'll do that is by drawing the tangent curve. So I would say, I would even pick one of them. Let's say draw the tangent curve. I will draw the tangent at t is equal to 1.0 seconds. You could equally have said 3 or 5 and uh, find the gradient of the tangent line.
Okay guys, now even though the question says that you're not expected to do the calculations, let's just do the calculations just for practice, even if that is not required for by this exact question. So, um, you can see that I've drawn the tangent line at uh, that point, at t is equal to 1 seconds, and what I'm going to do is calculate the gradient of the tangent curve. So, we know that the velocity will be the gradient of the tangent, which is going to be change in y over change in x. So the instantaneous velocity will be the change in y, so our final y is minus 0.4 minus our initial y which is 0.4 divided by our change in x. So we're going from there to there, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is going to be, so that's going to be 0 0.6 seconds. So this is going to be minus 0 0.8, which is our change in displacement, divided by 0 0.6, which equals minus 1.3 meters per second. Notice that our velocity is negative and our gradient at that point is also negative. Okay folks, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If there are any questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing.